Hi everybody, this is Bill from BillNetherlands.com. I'm here to talk about Mocha today and offer just some simple, quick screen replacement tricks in Mocha. What is Mocha? Mocha is a program that ships with After Effects. It has a plugin in After Effects that communicates with the standalone software. This used to be, a long time ago when I first started, a separate program that now is included with Creative Cloud. It's a really cool tracking program. If you've only been using a uh, the tracker in After Effects or the 3D camera tracker to track your screens or track your camera, you really need to dive into Mocha and check this out. You can do some really cool stuff with it. It's super intuitive, but yeah, let's dive in. I'm gonna do a simple screen replacement, that's it. All right, so here I have uh, some stock footage. It has a green screen over the computer here, and we want to just remove that and then comp in uh, just a, a graphic. I've basically, I took my logo it's really silly, but it works. If you go to effects and presets over on the right, I'm just gonna look up Mocha After Effects, Mocha AE. I'm gonna drag that onto my video. So now see, here we have Mocha. We just click that, it says Mocha is starting. Close this. Uh, Mocha actually opened on the other side of my screen, so I'm just going to drag it over. And you can see Mocha is its own independent suite. It's really cool really great tracking program. If you've only been using the regular motion tracker or the 3D camera tracker in After Effects, this is probably actually the best tool for screen matching. And all I'm gonna do is uh, grab this tool up here, which is the Create X-Spline Layer tool. So we're just gonna hit these four corners of the screen here. Some people don't like to be exact, I do. I'm pushing down the center wheel of my uh, mouse right now to be able to move around the screen without changing the mask. Oh, let's push it again, there we go. There. And I'm clicking the right button of the mouse to release. I'm going to scooch that just a little bit. And now I wanna pull these corners all the way out on each side. Since this is a sharp mask, I want it to just be nice and sharp like that. Great, so there it is. Um, Unfortunately, it looks like we started a few points in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is, since we started actually a few frames in here, I'm going to grab the T. See these playheads that look like they're, they're they say T on them, but they look like a normal playhead or a frame by frame um, skip button. These are actually establishing your track. So you just wanna go backwards first and it's making the tracking data right now. And now I'm going to go forward. Zoom out so you can see it a little bit better. It's doing a pretty good job. Seeing a little bit of slip up here. What you could do in that case is stop, zoom into where it's a problem, adjust it, and then go backwards a bit. Let it fix itself. Stop it and then go forward again. One problem I think we're having here is this looks like footage where somebody actually motion tracked green screen onto the screen rather than having the tracking information in the actual shot when they shot it. So the, the monitor is actually a little bit blurry. It's, it's really hard to notice, but I, I think this guy is actually more in focus in some parts than the monitor, and the monitor needs to be the thing that's in focus. Uh, just a little critique of this particular stock clip that I think makes it a little bit harder to match. I've actually already worked with this one, so um, I kind of have ide an idea of what we're dealing with here, and there's just some challenges. There's also screen glare can cause this, which where you can use a double track to deal with that, but that's a different, we don't really have that problem with the screen, so I'm just focusing on the screen match on this green part here. Oh, looks like we're a little bit off there. Let's adjust that and go backwards. See if it comes off at all. Stop. And you can just keep going back and forth until you get it really in a nice place. Cool, so there's our track. Let's play it back real quick and see what it looks like. There it goes, looking really nice. Okay, and now I wanna make sure that the plane is aligned properly with the tracking data because the shape data in Mocha is different than 
the tracking data and you want to make sure that it's going to put your plane in the right spot. So let's just click on the plane up here. Yeah, see, this isn't correct at all. So since the plane is not aligned with the actual screen, I want to click here on show planar surface. And this will give me the actual plane, you know, where that's going to live. And so I just want to grab the corners of this plane. And now you can see the plane is actually moving as I'm adjusting it. And we just want those corners to be as close as we can get to the corner of the monitor. This is really what determines kind of where your corner pins are going to go in After Effects. So this part is pretty important to get exact in uh, Mocha. There we go. Now if I play it back, this should line up correctly. Keyword, should. That's really nice, right? Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna save this. When we hit exit, it's just going to prompt us to save it. It should automatically uh, ask us to save. There it is, click save. Now we're back in After Effects. Super easy workflow. Now, we have tracking data here. We want to create track data, and that's going to pull that data from Mocha. So hit, click track data, it was layer three. We probably should have given it a name like screen track uh, for next time. You could do that. I would actually do that if I was doing this professionally, but I'm in a hurry. So here we are. <laughs> and now you can see it's set these corner pins. Now we need to tell those corner pins to attach to um, another layer. So let's grab our graphic, back to project window, grab my logo here. Obviously it's, you know, it's its full size now. Just going to click on not the graphic, but here on the uh, stock footage, go to FX controls. At the bottom here, there's an export option. You have to export the data. And I'm going to use, um, probably use transform. If that doesn't work, we'll try something else. But let's try transform, export layer, export to Bill Netherlands logo. And we're just going to use source, apply export. Okay, now why wasn't that right? It's moving it, it's, it's, moving with the screen, but the corners are not pinned to the monitor. So we want to undo that, go to the stock here, and I want to reset export option to corner pin. I'm going to add motion blur support. That's really important when you have a shot that has motion blur in it. Um, depending on the shutter speed of the camera that was shooting it, this can be really helpful. Let's do that, apply export. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's tracking correctly, that's good but it's not quite in the right spot. So how can I fix this? Well, I could play with the alignment and see if that works. That could be one fix. I think the reason this is happening is my logo is not actually a um, the size of the comp window. So I'll show you how to fix that in one second. Let's see if alignment actually does the job though. It's getting us most of the way there. But let's just undo that. Let's go back, get rid of the tracking data, and let's see why that happened. Okay, we're at 100%. Yep, does not fit the comp. What is the size of the comp window? Go to composition, composition settings. Oh, we are at 4K. So 380, 3840 by 2160. So what I wanna do is pre-comp my graphic, and I just hit, uh, I'm on a PC, I hit Control Shift C, pre-comp, logo. You always want to name your pre-comps so you don't lose track of them. Go in here, composition, composition settings, and let's just, you know, there's presets for 4K. Let's make sure this is actually correct. Yep, that looks right. Okay, and then you're just going to right-click this, transform, fit to comp. That's not right because it's distorting the image. So since this is not the right size, I'm going to fit to comp width. There we go, looks great. And now we're back here. Okay, to your stock clip, pick pre-comp logo for layer export two. Make sure it's set to corner pin, support motion blur, and this should work, apply export and go. Yes, there it is. Now you'll notice we've got some leaks. How can we fix that? Uh, a few different ways we could do deal with this. But first of all, let's key out that green because that's gonna make a huge difference. Mute, mute the logo, go here, 
go to effect, keying, key light, screen color, grab the green, boom. So now we have a black screen. Now you can either comp on top or underneath. The problem with underneath, underneath is now these crosses show up, but the advantage is you do get a cleaner edge. So a few ways to deal with that. Uh, one, I just did a project today for a client. And what I did was I actually, um, I literally just, I was in a hurry, doubled the pre-comp, um, assuming that I'm not gonna change any of the settings with the corner pins and stuff, drag it above, and then um, literally, like you wanna make sure that edge is still good. So what I would do is make a mask over it that'll cover the X's, Go to the mask, hit M, subtract, and that gets rid of our X's, except for dude in the middle. Don't know what his deal is. Um, solo, let's solo this real quick. Oh, that's why. Okay, that is super bizarre, but basically, because of the corner pins, the mask is going to look different than the literal mask would be that you put on there. So you just want to kind of, this is a really goofy way to do this, but I'm showing you because it is a solution. Um, probably better to set this before you actually go about doing all the corner pin stuff, but it's a quick and dirty fix. If you run into this and you're just like, how do I get rid of the crosses quickly? I'm in a hurry. And then um, we just want to make sure that now we'll set this to add. There we go. So what's happening is you've got the middle section. It's clean, no crosses. You add in the under layer. They look exactly the same. They look really nice. And now you get the best of both worlds because you have the monitor kind of taking care of the crop of the image, but then in the middle here, you, you, you get rid of the crosses. Pretty straightforward that way. And it's looking pretty clean. Now... We've got a cross, little cross thing coming in here. So let's get rid of that real quick. Really simple, just go to the mask. Um, how far do I want to pull that out? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, looks good. Now, of course, it, it looks like a sharp image on this background. So there are some ways you could play around with um, blurring things to get it to look better, to get it to look, you know, more spot on. I mean, if you wanted to get really crazy, if this were a TV show, you could put screen reflect reflection over it, but that becomes a whole thing because you've got these two people over here and then it's like, did I take a reverse angle of them? This is stock footage, so we don't have that. But in terms of a product demo, this is pretty good. I mean, if you play it back, let's take a look at it. It's moving slowly, but you can see that it, it's, a, it's a good track. Looks nice. And really compositing for a realistic on-screen image, that's a whole science in and of itself. We could do a whole other video on how to composite this in and make it look realistic. This is more of a, you're doing a product demo, you want the client's product on screen, pretty straightforward. Thanks for watching. That's a really simple tip that, you know, sometimes I even forget how Mocha works when I haven't used it in a while. It's always good to have a refresher. I kind of actually made this for myself just so I could remind myself oh yeah, there's that one little step you always forget to do. And I thought uh, that would be useful for other designers, both uh, newbies and professionals who just, you know, sometimes when you haven't used a tool in a while, you got to go back and refresh yourself. So I hope this helped. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, click that subscribe button and like the video if you enjoyed this and if it was helpful. Thank you.